This is GABNET, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. is the ramble goes until midnight tonight here in the united states of america from new york city the city's so nice yeah they named it twice uh, for, twice that's that before there uh, twice they named it twice hello there how are you it's another week of uh, frivolity and uh, useless uh, exercise in uh, radio frustration okay or broadcasting frustration this isn't radio who am i kidding it's not radio it's the internet podcasting is where any amateur can be king okay oh why is that see it's got Phil Meyer there already you know why because I pushed the wrong button here okay all right well what the hell why not we may as well just bring him in and uh, I've already got Phil Meyer see listed right there right there see but then uh, that's before I brought him in here. Uh, I'm a little uh, convoluted tonight because I got in really late. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, there we got Tony's background. Well, who says it's Tony's? Maybe I'm at Tony's. Maybe you are at Tony's. Yeah, that's always a possibility, you know. That's a person. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Um, I'm doing, I'm actually doing pretty good. I, I feel good. Uh, I look good, uh, you know. It's uh, it's it's been a good. I'm glad to be home too. Well, you were only gone for what three days or something? It was three days too long. Uh, you know, it, you, you get on the plane, you go, you schlep, uh, you take cabs, you get there, you sit in rooms. Why? You listen. Why do you go to those conventions anyway? It's carpet. He's in the carpet business. Right. Okay. Um, now, are there hookers at the carpet convention? Well, they give us noisemakers, and we wear a fez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but you know, while I was there, mm -hmm. I would, you know, you know, I collect art. And uh, do you really? I, I, I would love to see some of the art you collect. I, I actually have a, a a real Picasso, a large one, and uh, minute, a real I, Picasso. Yes. How much did it cost you? Uh, it was a wedding gift. Uh, it's uh, there. Uh, that one is uh, from his blue period, and uh, it, it's probably I've gone to a couple of galleries that that had that same one. Yeah, and worth about ten grand. Is that all? Yeah, I thought Picasso's were worth a great deal more than that. It's, uh, it's a it's a lithograph. Oh, it's a lithograph. Oh, okay, all right. But I still lithographs, you know. Uh, I've got see. a signed lithograph by uh, Keith Herring here, and I don't know how much it's worth, but I think it's worth something. Oh, there we go. There's Picasso. Yeah, no, this is a Hunter Biden, and I it's left a... the price tag on it. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there there he is. That, that's, lay, that's, lay, that's a real half-million-dollar Hunter Biden. Lay, lay off, Hunter. I mean, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, for Christ's <laughs> sake. Oh, what yeah. a, hey. Gabnet, uh, you know, I, uh, what else do I got to do? Oh, wait a minute. I'm using the green putty tonight for my arthritis. Oh, it, and look, right. see what happens? You can't see it. Yeah, invisible putty. See? It's there. But if I put it in front of me, yeah. Well, then it puts a hole in my head. Yeah, that's invisible putty. Uh, like a pirate. Yeah, but uh, this, is, this is the green putty, so you can't see it. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I am on the black. Putty. Yeah, let's really? They, 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 they turned me on to this for arthritis, but it's not really, it doesn't really help that much. It's it just fun to do. Yeah, and it strengthens your hand. It does? Yeah. Have, uh, have you noticed, have you tried to open a jar or something uh, lately? No, and I don't know. That, uh, you are a real man because you can open the no, jar. I am a real man. Yes, I can open a jar. <laughs> yeah. But. Hey, uh, you know, uh, 
I, well, uh, well, 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 wait a minute. Before we get going here, last week, you know, you spend money on the wrong shit, you know? What did I buy? You uh, bought yeah. yourself a round Hunter trip, a, a round trip first class ticket to Denver. Yeah. I mean, well, you don't need to buy a first class ticket to Denver. Okay. All right. Uh, so tell them, tell them what happened, Mister. I got the big buck, so I'm going to take a nine hundred dollar first class trip to Denver. That, that, that's real f you money. I'm. I can't. I kid you not. Uh, well, look. First of all, in defense of the first class ticket. Uh, well, no. To begin with, it isn't f you money on your part. It's f you money on the part of the airline. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, tell them what happened. Tell them what real, happened. A few months. Well, anyway, what what the story is first, uh, you know, t the logic behind this is uh, a regular ticket is about four hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. and the regular ticket is uh, not in main cabin plus; it's just back in coach. Yeah, but it's also you're only going to Denver. It's not like right. you're going to China. I I understand, but I uh, in the in the past. I usually fly about 50,000 miles a year, mm -hmm. which gets me, uh, depending on what airlines uh, I'm going on, uh, like Gold Medallion or, uh, you know, uh, one of these uh, things that uh, get you extra miles and mm -hmm. get you upgrades. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in past years, I would go to Europe at least once. I'd go back east twice. I'd go on a major scuba trip once and mm -hmm. then one other thing for the business right that would give me about 50,000 miles now if uh, you fly those miles plus you get so many uh, 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 stops now I don't mind going you know taking four or five stops especially if I'm flying first class mm -hmm. so this time I was supposed to go San Francisco to Phoenix, Phoenix to Denver, and 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 reversed. So that would have given me four stops. So I'm playing the miles game, trying to uh, accumulate more miles. And I get mm -hmm. with my medallion status, I get an uh, one and a half miles per flown mile. Mm -hmm. So it helps you reach that fifty thousand mile status faster. Now, the money, <laughs> a regular ticket, about four hundred, four hundred and change. Mm -hmm. Now, if you upgrade to main cabin uh, plus or, you know, the main cabin where you get that little bit of extra room, mm -hmm. a little extra size seat, you're in front of the wing so you don't have to listen to the engine noise. Mm -hmm. That in those, on those flights was about... I, I remind you again, you're only going to Denver. Go ahead. Right. Well, okay. Well, anyway, those flights... I mean, I could stand to go, you know, go with the dogs in steerage or whatever uh, uh, to wait, get wait if, for, if for Denver. I mean, how long does it take to get to fucking Denver? Well, it, it took long enough, and it took even longer to get home. Well, but... that's the story <laughs> you've got to tell. So anyway, if you get the main cabin plus with the extra room, it's about 70 bucks per leg extra. Now the you only, only cabin, have two legs, so that should be pretty cheap. Oh, it, it was two legs each way of oh, the flight. Yeah. So I, um, uh, what I did was uh, one of the legs wasn't available. So I said, okay, for another $250, $300, I can fly first class. I get all the legs in the first class seat. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, nobody bothers you in first class. I pee a lot. So you got your own bathroom basically for about... It's 10 people mm -hmm. and uh you know un unless somebody from the uh, uh you know from the uh, hinterlands kind of makes it through the curtain but uh so you have your own bathroom it's cleaner because you don't have 400 all people. right all right get on with it all right so for, for, for 250 so far you haven't justified it go ahead now uh so I get on the plane. I have a great flight over there. Nobody bothers me. I pee as much as I want. Uh -huh. I'm back, I'm at Denver Airport. I got there early, uh, you know, because I knew that there'd be a lot of uh, things with TSA and uh, my uh, my global uh, uh, flight thing uh, had expired and I hadn't renewed it yet. And that meant that I had to take my shoes off and 
go oh the belt. Oh, my God. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's that's horrible. horrible. That's horrible. Hey, you know, if they don't put me through TSA, they took away my shaving cream and they took away uh, a little pocket knife I had. A tiny little thing was on my keychain. Uh, uh, yeah. That was on the way back. Yeah, you're going to put it to somebody's throat and say, nobody move or I'm going to kill this guy. What yeah. is that? Yeah. You know, I, uh, you know I, I whipped it out and I said, okay, yeah. you, uh, yeah. you know, let's go to Havana. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, uh, I, I'm waiting for the plane and it's delayed, delayed, delayed. So then finally, I'm, I'm at the gate and I'm looking and there's a bunch of mechanics and they're all standing around looking at each other, shaking their heads. And all <laughs> the, the, the luggage starts coming off. And I, I said, hey, you know, can you get me on another flight, maybe to L.A. and then to San Francisco? No, this is the last flight. You're stuck. So I was going to be stuck in Denver overnight. Wow. So what I did was... Uh, uh, then all of a sudden, I looked at my phone, and they said, "We've gotten, we got you a uh, flight on United. Uh, you got forty minutes to get to this other terminal." So I run to the other terminal. I don't have my bags. You know, it was all carry on. So I run to the other terminal, and they said, "Yes, yes. Here's your seat, forty four D, forty four D." And then they said, "But wait a minute, American didn't pay for this seat yet, so we can't let you on the plane." And we have too many people <laughs> with this. <laughs> and so uh, they said, we'll get a supervisor. Supervisor comes over. And luckily, you know, I, I've traveled a lot, so I don't lose it when, uh, you know, when things are happening. I just, you know, mm -hmm. hey, this is the way it goes. And if I have to get a hotel, I'll get a hotel. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, they, they do what they got to do. They get me on the plane. And I'm walking further and further and further back. You know, remember, I'm the last guy on, so my luggage is hitting everybody as I'm rolling it down the uh, mm -hmm. aisle. Mm -hmm. Then there's another part of the plane beyond the back of the plane. And my seat was at the end of that. So I, I, I sit down. Uh, the, <laughs> the, in, the interesting thing Hope was... Hope you're enjoying your $900. Oh, believe me. And I, I got another story for that. So uh, I sit down, and of course, because I'm in the back of the plane, I'm the last person to be served. Anything. By the way, there are only 21 people listening to us right now. This story must be riveting. Oh, yes. So, uh, uh, well, you know, Larry's not there. Not Larry, uh, uh, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, what ends up happening is you can't take your mask off unless you're eating or drinking something. So finally, the steward comes around to me and says, what would you like? I said, one of everything. <laughs> and, you know, give me the cranberry juice. Give me the, give me the orange juice. Give me the water. Mm -hmm. uh, how many cookies you got there? So uh, this way, I didn't have to put my mask on because I always had something. And they came around. They, you know, I wasn't drinking the water. And I why didn't I, you have to put your mask on? Oh, because you were always eating something. <laughs> right. And uh, so you know the thing is so i get back because they didn't put me in first class on that united flight i call uh, i try to get a hold of american and they mm -hmm. said oh you can't call us if you have a consumer complaint you have to go on chat and and do something like that so i haven't i haven't done it yet but uh, i'm going to say now, hey wait look. a minute did they did uh, united offer to give you a certain rebate on your money cuz you had to fly steerage no it was uh, i can't get through to american who i had originally flown with and put me on the united flight oh okay so american yeah so it'd be, yeah. And but i you know getting to my seat i did go past a lot of people but there was barking dogs and there were these big boxes that said luggage uh, on it, you know, and then beyond that, that's where my seat was. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, any, you know, these are the kinds of things you have to put up with when you travel. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you would think they would have told you, listen, uh, we're going to refund a certain amount of your money because we did not give you first class both ways. I, I, it's so hard to get a hold of these people. Uh, you can't talk to anyone at American. You you have to email them. Uh, they they're on to this. What do you mean they, you can't get a hold of anybody at American? I have a phone number for that particular thing. I called the Advantage Desk, 
which is you know whatever I got uh, the advantage yeah. thing. Yeah. And and uh, they said no 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 we can't handle it. You have to go to this website and click on this and then you can send a request. But there's no phone number. So uh, I just haven't had time to deal with it uh, because I, I I wrote them. And I said, I want either a free ticket mm -hmm. or I want a positive space upgrade to first class on another, on another flight. Yeah. So uh, I haven't been able to get a hold of anybody. Uh, hey, uh, there's one other. Uh, By the thing. way, we're down to 19 people now. Good, good. They're all trying to book flights on, on American. Uh, you, you know, Larry Elder? Yeah. Okay. I just saw. And this is uh, Newsweek, uh, that he leads Gavin Newsom's recall challengers by 10 points in a new poll. Hmm. So uh, well, that's, as long as he doesn't win for the Hall of Fame, I'm happy. Yeah, I, I understand. That's why I mention him. Uh, he, um, he there's 46 candidates uh, that are vying for uh, being coming the governor of California. Yeah, but they say that the recall is not going to happen. Well, I guess forty-eight percent don't want the recall, and forty-six or forty-one percent—I forgot what the article said—do uh, want the recall. So, unless the people that don't want the recall don't vote, yeah. You know, because this is a special election. I think it's taking place September 4th. I think the whole thing's stupid, don't you? Uh, I hate Gavin Newsom. No, you I, can hate Gavin Newsom all you like. The whole idea of these recalls is stupid. Yeah. And if they were doing this to a Republican, you'd be yelling, holy hell. You know? Uh, you know, I mean, a Republican wouldn't do the kinds of things to their constituents that Gavin Newsom does. Uh, the the onerous uh, taxes and lockdowns and uh, you know, he says that he's following the science. You know, uh, I'll tell you what the science. Look, is. I I happen to like I happen to like Newsom a lot, but recently I've gotten disenchanted with him because I just think he's kind of lost that luster. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but nevertheless, I don't think he should be recalled. I don't think there's a reason to recall him. Well, uh, I, I got the, the new scientist uh, from uh, uh, th that's uh, going to be running the CDC. Uh, yeah. Can you see? yeah, okay, fine, good. Ha ha, funny joke. I, tonight I was saying to Marjorie, though, I'm a little miffed at the CDC. I, I think they're causing a lot of problems lately. Yeah. Because they're calling shots and then they're having to recant them. And there's so much of that going on that I think people do not trust the CDC like they should in a pandemic. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I think that they, when they keep changing the rules every other day, I think they lose those people who were on the cusp of saying, well, maybe I should get myself a, a you know, a vaccination or whatever. Uh, because they don't know who to believe and they don't believe the CDC because they, they're changing their tune every day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th there's some other stuff, like uh, the White House is not releasing certain information. Uh, like, of the breakthrough COVID uh, 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 infections, uh, how many of them, uh, uh, you know, were non-infected? You know, they're, so they're, they're, not, they're not coming up with the information. How many were non-infected of who? Uh, well, you know, they of, of the people getting the Delta variant, mm -hmm. uh, how, you know, they, they aren't saying how many of them were vaccinated. They no. say they're yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're saying they're not, that 95 no. percent of the people who were vaccinated yeah. do not come down with the with the virus. Uh, but, uh, and the ones that do uh, do not get it to a sufficient degree where they have to be hospitalized. That's correct. But what they're not saying is how many uh, people are actually uh, are breakthroughs and how many of them are uh, that are getting the, the Delta variant and how many of them are uh, had not been vaccinated? They uh, say the majority of the people, I think it's 99.5% uh, of the people 
who are winding up being hospitalized or, or dying uh, are, um, are, are people who weren't vaccinated. All right. Well, you know. 99.5%. But these people have the uh, ability to, you know, uh, to, to decide that they're not going to be around anymore. I mean, if they don't well, want to no, get No, back- no, but they think they're going to be around. They think that this whole thing's phony. They're, they're watching, you know, Fox and they're reading it online. I mean, one guy said, I'm not getting vaccinated. Why? Well, it's this and it's that. And they said, where'd you find that out? And he said, oh, I, uh, online. Yeah. You know, well, twi- I tweets. Have, I have one employee that was uh, that was holding out and didn't want to get vaccinated. He was an anti-vaxxer. And I told him, I said, look, you know, it, it's difficult for me to send you into people's homes if you don't uh, if you don't get the vaccination. And so he went to CVS and he got vaccinated today. He got his second he's got his second shot. And um, uh, I uh, I called him up and I said, you know, I I heard that you're going to start barking like a dog or clucking like a chicken. Which one did you get, Moderna or <laughs> Pfizer? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but is he happy now that he got it? Uh, so far, you know, he, he he's okay. You know, he's he's expecting the worst, and uh, you know. Well, I mean, he all he had to do was look at you. You've had both of them, and you're you're fine. Well, I don't know if I had that issue. Uh, remember, I uh, was ha- having symptoms where I thought I might have been having a stroke or a heart attack. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went to the ER, and this was four hours after, or four days after the second shot. Mm-hmm. And uh, they tested me, and they said, no, no heart attack, no stroke. And then I got another, an angioplasty about a week later, and they said there wasn't any, uh, uh, any change since my prior angi- angioplasty in 2018. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, what had happened was I uh, I couldn't hold anything in my hand. This is four days afterwards. I was dropping mm-hmm. stuff. I couldn't remember anything. I couldn't even have a conversation with people. I was like lost. So I closed this. I was alone that Monday. I closed the store two hours early and I went to the ER. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe I had those things that uh, they said younger people are having with it's like an enlarging of the heart. No. Well, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, why why would I have those uh, well, those issues? What the younger people are getting won't kill them. It's uh, I forget what it's called now. Uh, myocarditis. My, 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 my myocarditis. I think something. Yeah, like it's some sort of thing like an enlarging of the heart. And it's a temporary thing. It's a temporary thing. Uh, so I'm just wondering if that's what I had. I you know, no because idea. they said it happens to them four days after they get the shot. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, God, they shot me right in the eye. Yeah. Oh, okay, Pirate. Pirate Bennett. Yay, matey. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cute. I don't have the green one with me. Oh, I, I my knife is green. No, it shows up. Yeah. yeah. Wrong kind of green. Wrong kind of green. So This is the right green color, by the way. This is the same as a green screen green. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, oh, the, also exercise. That's why I feel so good. Oh, really? Good for yeah, you. Uh, you I know, haven't exercised in. I haven't actually taken one of my walks in about. Oh, I don't know. Since last Saturday, I went out Saturday. This uh, this is a CrossFit uh, thing, except it's like CrossFit on steroids, and uh, this gym, uh, they have a waiting list to get in and. I knew the guy's wife. She was my chiropractor at one time, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, that, the guy that owns the gym. Mm-hmm. So they probably put me to the head of the list, and I, I go three days a week, Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. But Monday and Thursday is 5.30 a.m., and uh, I have to get up at 4.30 to be at this place. Mm-hmm. They don't even have showers. This is so butch, this place. So... Uh, they have you pushing stuff around, pulling stuff. I feel like Sisyphus. So you're outside, you're in the parking lot, and you got this chain around your waist, and you're pulling a sled with a, with a bunch of weighted plates on it. And uh, uh, the first time I did it, I thought I was going to die. 
now I'm, I'm getting stronger and I'm noticing that some of the other activities I'm doing, I'm, I'm stronger oh, at. Well, at. That's good. It's good. It's, you, know where, it, you know where I went to dinner tonight? Oh, where? Uh, the Trump Hotel. The Trump Hotel. Uh, you, you know, the, a, the, uh, the, uh, Trump Plaza. Trump Plaza. Yeah. Okay. And that's the old, uh, it's on the other side of the park. What, what was it you called? Know, it's, it's in Columbus Circle. Oh, it's in okay. Columbus What's Circle. the hotel he owned? In, uh, on yeah, the I went to a the restaurant that's been there for a long time. Great. Yeah. Good restaurant. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, how was the deal? Oh, terrific. My business, I, my business manager was in town and he wanted to take us out to dinner. So. Well, I, I heard that at Trump restaurants, they serve Kentucky Fried This chicken. isn't a Trump restaurant. It's owned by, I can't remember the name of the, it's like at about two or three different restaurants in this one restaurant area. Yeah, McDonald's, Kentucky the, the Fried Kentucky Chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all of the president's favorites. No, what was the name? Wait, hold on a second. I'll tell you the name of it. I have it right here. Hold on. Uh, the name of it was, it is... Uh, Nogatine restaurant by Jean Georges. Oh, Jean Georges. Yeah, Jean Georges uh, <laughs> does this as a, you know, he has, he has like two or three different restaurants in this. How does he cook in all places at the same time? I have no idea. But they, they have one, they seem to have one, uh, what do you call it? One, one kitchen. Yeah. And they send, send out the food to each of these different restaurants. Really? Yeah, it was really good. I had a, I had a. Uh, let me see here. I had a tuna tartare and I had a uh, steak, and I had. Uh, it was very nice. Did you have steak tartare? No, no. I only had tuna tartare. Yeah. I like to. I love oh, tuna tartare. I, I will called, die for a good tuna tartare. Uh, wait a minute. Isn't that called sashimi? No. <laughs> you know, it's eleven bucks at, at uh, you know the tart samurai the restaurant. Tartar is is uh, is what do you call it? Is uh, or marinated? Is, is, is ground up? It's yeah. It's ground up okay. and raw. Steak tartar was thinly sliced. Steak tartar is not thinly sliced. Steak tartar is, if I remember correctly, it's ground, but it's okay. not uh, it's not cooked. It's like it's like. Basic hamburger, uh, but just pure prime meat and uh, raw. I told you at the Trump Hotel, you had McDonald's. All they did was change the box. Could be, could be, <laughs> but it wasn't. It wasn't run by uh, Trump, right? You know, so. But it had his name on it, really. Yeah, yeah. And why did you? No, he didn't have his. They didn't have his name on the restaurant. I know, but they had his name on the hotel. Why did you decide that, or did your business manager? The business decide? manager decided because he's been there before, and it's a very good restaurant. It's one of the quality restaurants in New York. It's been there uh, for years. Is he kosher? Yes, he's kosher. So, uh, and this and Trump's restaurant is kosher. It, it is a Trump restaurant. They <laughs> rent the place out, the space out to run their restaurant in Trump Plaza. It's not a Trump restaurant. Well, they, somehow it is, you know. Uh, uh, I'm glad you had a nice meal. Yes, and, I did. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, else? there's nobody really waiting, just Alan and Brian Neary, who I, of course, oh. like and enjoy. But uh, unless Brian, you, unless you want to stick around, you know. I've got some stuff to do, and i got to be up really early tomorrow morning. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. So but, Pop says Brian to get a burrow. Car. What? Brian, Brian got a new car. You I know. Ask. I know. We talked we talk to him about it the other day. Oh, You okay. don't listen to this program, huh? Uh, well, I know you talked to him about he sold his old car. I didn't know if you knew he got a new one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know he got a new one. Uh, you know he lost a lot of weight. Yeah, I know. I've seen him. You know, he, he calls this show. He, he had to lose weight to fit into that new car. Probably. You know? All right. Okay. okay. You guys have a, have a wonderful show. We'll tr and, we'll try. You know, there's hardly uh, anybody calling it, so I don't know if it's going to be much of a if show. If you ever want some part ownership in my uh, in Hunter your, Biden original, just lay off Hunter Biden. He's a, he's a retarded child. Okay. Ah, uh, he's, he's a crook, and so is his dad. No, but, his dad isn't a crook. Come uh, on, well, get off. Half, of it. half the money goes to his father. 
-hmm. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. Oh, oh, before oh, you go boy. to these guys, yeah, uh, I started watching the uh, the trial, not trial, but the uh, House uh, investigation yeah. On, yeah. Uh, on the sixth. Yeah, uh, it was it was interesting. I listened to the cops this morning. Yeah. Uh, recount what had happened and this is really the first time i've heard yeah. their story mm -hmm. and um you know it made me say i hope they prosecute the people that broke into the fullest extent of the law yeah i don't i don't believe that uh, you know i believe that people have free will and if they did that they did it because they wanted to do it not because trump told them to do it but uh you know when well, i heard the I, 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 it, it, trump trump didn't help well, no, yeah, nobody helped. But nobody uh, helped. But Trump didn't help. Yeah, when I heard the police officers' stories, uh, it, it it just yeah, really, absolutely. You know. Anyway, I will uh, talk at you later. All right, well, you and There goes uh, there. There he goes. There he goes. There's there's Phil Meyer. There we go. Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay. Let's see here. Are there more people waiting to go on? I guess so. I guess we have more people waiting to go on. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to have much of a show tonight, but we'll uh, we'll give it a try. If it's dull, I'll just kill it early. Oh, look who's who's got a popsicle. Did you bring some to share with the rest of us? Uh, hey, did you know I lost some weight? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I hear you got a new car, too. I hear too. you got a new car. Yeah, I sold my old car, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was the topic for him to leave. Why does he always drop the bomb when he leaves? He always says the important stuff like at 8 o'clock. Oh, you know, I forgot. I was gonna. I was trying to remember what the name of the car was, which is McLaren, right? Yeah, McLaren. And yeah. I should have said that to him, and then he would have known that I knew. Yeah. Speaking of the uh, Marjorie Green Taylor, whatever her name is, trying to talk her and get to, did you see the guys, the protesters storm them? No. <laughs> and no. They, had, they had a big blow-up doll of uh, Trump. And it said pedophiles for Trump. Oh my God. Oh yeah, boy. Funny. And where, where was that? That was out in front of somewhere. I know they were, they were saying that oh it's it's bad because the people who were well the people who were in the Capitol building aren't getting a fair trial right now and yeah. blah blah blah. Oh blah, wait a minute, hold on a second. You know what I didn't do here? See, I mean I'm so out of it tonight because I did uh, you know I did. Uh, go out to dinner and then come in here in a rushed manner. I forgot to put you guys on. There you are. There's Tony, too. So Trump was saying the other day that he had dinner at one of his restaurants in one of his hotels. I don't know the place you went to. And they had roasted peacock. I thought there was a federal law against eating peacock in this country. No. No? Oh, well, okay. well, why would there be a law against eating peacock? I don't know. They taste like chicken. You probably, your tuna today tasted like chicken, too. No, it didn't. No, it tasted like tuna. What does tuna taste like? Like tuna? Yeah. Yeah. Man, not, tuna. not, not, uh, you know, star kiss. Not that kind of crap. No. But actual tuna. Real tuna, dark, dark in color. Yeah, you know what kind of tuna I had? Uh, no, I don't. Why don't you tell us? Al tuna. Al tuna. <laughs> Alex <laughs> tuna. Al tuna is a city in California. Was Phil selling dried paint uh, mm -hmm. during the show? Boy, what a boring show. The conversation with Phil. Oh, and like and, you help it. And, with, Oh boy. <laughs> did did his picture freeze? <laughs> I didn't think so. Internet problems. Oh my god. Yes. Alan? Yeah, no, I'm just uh I, you know, <laughs> the airline thing went on and on and on and on. Yes. And you said there were 10 people watching. No, I didn't say there were 10 people watching. I was said there were 19, but then it went up to 30, and now it's up to 38, and it just dropped to 37, thanks to you. Okay. Alan, my, my advice, when you have your own show, don't have Phil on. See? Then okay, I, I think I'll take that advice, Brian. 
This is Alex's show. And I have, another, I have more advice. If you have your own show, don't have me on. <laughs> no, definitely not. I don't want a bunch of old codgers on my, on my show. <laughs> Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, boy. Who else is here? Now who's quiet? I should give Alan a show just to see how good it is. Yeah, you can check out pop stories. I listen to it. Would you really? Well, you know why? Because I like to listen to radio, but I think you're right. Imagine if they can tell cop stories. I'd like to, like, you know, I find an interesting one. Hey. Cop stories with Alan. There you go. I, I think I think it is interesting that Phil with, didn't believe in the insurrection until... Today, when he heard the four police officers testify, oh. and now because the cops told their side, he now believes that there was an insurrection, even though he didn't say it that way. Yeah. I, I was just sneezing. <clears throat> Excuse uh, me, folks. I turned off the microphone so you wouldn't have to hear me sneeze. And the weird thing is, I like this guy. Who? Who? Bill. Oh, don't, know why, you, but... don't you go shooting with him or not? Phil's a nice yeah. enough guy, you know. He is a good guy. He's smart. Uh, he sells a lot of carpet and linoleum. Um, mm -hmm. you know. He's generous. He just has a weird outlook on things. He has the Republican outlook. Well, I don't know that he does. I mean, I think, I don't know. I, I just sometimes doubt his sincerity. Sometimes I don't know when he's joking or not. I try to figure it out. Like, I can't figure him out sometimes. Like when and you went on to him, you argue with him, Alex. I'm like, is he take? Like, I'm trying to like, is he serious? Sometimes I think he is a little bit. Yes, when, Phil. We we're talking about you, but we told you to stick around. Mm -hmm. Oh, he will. He'll be texting me any minute now. You know, because he's listening to the show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I I have a sad story. Well, not a sad story, Alex. I got something you might find interesting, actually. But wait a minute. Is it a sad story or something I might find interesting? I think it's a combination. I'll let you decide. Listen to this. I, my brother was on a conference call with uh, from work today with the city. So they were they had like one of those conference meetings, and one of the guys is a tech guy. So he does like they can do tech work from the house. Mm -hmm. Now Alex, he was one of these non-vaxxers. He never got the vaccine. Now he's been down ten days with the variant. He can't get out of bed. He's having hallucinations. He's down in the basement. His wife's upstairs, and he lost about twenty pounds. He may have to go to the hospital. He's now he's calling everybody he knows to get the vaccine. I'm sorry, it's too late. I mean, my brother's my brother was telling me before this. He says, and he was like, "Oh, I, they were afraid to get now." The guy is sick as a dog. He, he cannot believe it's that bad. My brother was just telling me this afternoon about. It. I couldn't believe it. He says, "You know, so and so." I says, "Yeah, how's he doing?" He says, "Sick as a dog." I said, "He's still sick." Ten days. He called my brother today. You had to hear his voice. He was hallucinating. He said he was like, he, you know, he lost about 20 pounds. His chest, he sounds totally knocked on his ass. Mm. And I was like, holy shit. My brother told me to go to the hospital. He, he said, I can breathe. He says, give it three more days. But Alex, he doesn't sound good. The wife's trying to get him to go to the hospital. He won't go. Oh, boy. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's he, sad. I mean, hope if he goes to the hospital, they might be able to give him some stuff which will bring him around. Well, that's what my brother said. He's not eating a lot. He says, you got to get some fluids in him. That's not good. So he's he trying to, to get the hospital. Up. They'll put some IV in him. They'll give him some, get him a de uh, hydrated. And then they'll, they'll probably, uh, there, there are, there is medication, you know, and there is 10 medication. days. He says, he's never felt this sick before. And he's only in his mid forties. He says, I've never thought it could be this bad. So he, he had, he might have the, the variant. He definitely, well, he definitely tested positive. So. The way I heard him talk, like he's all he's just totally like he can't even get off the couch. Pretty much, he gets the off. The variant's like, supposed to be terrible. That's that's what I said. The variant's supposed to be worse. Yeah. Than what? The, yeah. I was like, holy shit! I told him. What a, what a smart disease this is, huh, Brian? Mm. Just keep getting tested. That's all I ask. Keep getting tested. Yeah. Why? His company makes test kits. Yeah, oh, test. oh, I see. Don't you ever watch the show? No, no. I just do it. I don't pay attention to it. Nobody said okay. I had to pay attention. Okay. I get it. To it. Mm. Um, it's sad, it, actually. It, 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 is, it is. Of course, it's sad. But I mean, what are you going to do? I yeah. mean, I felt bad for the guy. Then I, brought, I said, you know what? I said, but he could have got And my brother didn't want to preach it. But this is before he got it. He was trying to tell all those guys, because come September, they're going to want him to be back in the city somewhat. Now they work 
three weeks full and one week in. So he wasn't trying to preach it. He says, it's up to you guys if you want. But once you go back to the city, they're going to make him test each week, de Blasio. Yeah. So he's like, it's up to you guys, he says. But what's the worst case scenario? Either you get it, the vaccine, or you probably might get COVID. Well, you know, you, know, it, it, you can still get COVID. But what you get is a very mild version of it. Um, it, uh, I, I would say, I would, would you say, Brian, that the uh, that the vaccine is working? Oh yes, yeah. I, in fact, a friend was just messaging me that I haven't talked to in a little bit, and uh, yeah, he said he's getting a bunch of text messages. He, he put on Facebook, "Have you guys been getting text messages about incentives for getting the vaccine?" And I said, "Yeah, incentive is living." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then him and I were texting back and forth. He says his mom's got the vaccine and he's still on the fence. I'm like, what are you waiting for? The, you know, there's data. There's It's not like a small data set. This is a huge data set. Well, the pandemic only exists as a pandemic among the non-vaccinated. Yeah, you know? right. That's what Biden said. There's a there's a, a pandemic now uh, amongst the, the non-vaccinated people. Yeah. And most of are Republicans, it's a strange way to get rid of them, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, but... The unfortunate thing is they're infecting kids. Yeah, and you still don't want it around anyways, because what happens yeah. if the variant gets stronger with yeah. these idiots not taking it? And then what happens if something else bursts through? We never know, right? So yeah, well, the next it. variant is already hit, the Lambda or something like that. And it's just like you know these these movies where you know they shoot the guy and the guy falls down on the ground and he's shot but you know man you want to kill him make sure he's dead dead or he's going to grab a gun with his last breath and try to shoot you you know yep but unless you shoot him in the hand well you know i mean we wouldn't have the delta variant right now if a lot more people got vaccinated right you know it only took an op an opportunity to infect those you know we would have a handful of people infected with Delta variant right now if it weren't for those people not getting their vaccine. And it's the simplest thing to do. I mean, you can roll out of bed now and get it. Remember in the beginning how hard it was to get it? Yeah. And now you can just roll out of bed, man. You got a CVS near you. You got a Rite mm -hmm. Aid. You got a Walgreens. You they got have a, signs, right? But I walk by CVS, walk in for the vaccine shot. Yeah, vet, you got a, vet, you know ask, you got a veterinarian uh, somewhere, you know. I mean, you know what I don't get, Alex? Uh, they're actually afraid, I think, of the of the inf of the information. Like I think, like oh, do they, it's almost like they don't trust the vaccine. Like sometimes, like he was hearing them the way they talk. Some of the people like they feel like oh, something could happen. There could be a drawback to it. I mean, you if you think if that's the case, millions and millions of people. But it could make them can. sterile. That's one that's yeah. running around. But they're listening to people. They're listening to these people that that they are not either saying the right stuff or not educated or whatever. You know, I could see maybe the kids the where it's not they couldn't take it twelve and under yet. They didn't pass that through. But if you're an adult, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I, don't, I just twelve and under will come up soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, they've are already doing got their race tested. Right now. They're yeah, they're, they're they're telling us for Adrian. The other kids don't have to, but I think they probably will say they want masks anyways. But uh, like Adrian's elementary for sure, they're saying back to school they're masks for sure because they you know nobody's vaccinated. But I haven't heard yet from them the junior high and high school. But uh, I think they're gonna probably have. You know, it's a all. shame. It's a shame um, that they have to. Uh, and here's the reason why. I mean, kids like Adrian. At their age, they're learning social skills mm -hmm. when they go to school. It's very important. And they learn social skills. And what they're doing is they're not able to get those social skills because they're not commingling like they should be, you know? And, and it's kind of sad because we're going to have a whole generation of kids who are going to be not particularly socially adept. Yeah, what, what's the biggest game at that age? Tag. Tag. Right, yeah. So, in, in order to play tag, you have to touch somebody. Exactly, but if they have the variant, yeah, you won't. You won't. Want to okay. touch Kids, them. we're gonna play tag. Everybody, wear a mask and put your gloves on. <laughs> yes. Or that, or you know, like Russian roulette. One of you has the variant. Oh, <laughs> so, Brian, was it you, Alex? What that said that you don't? You're not trusting the CDC. 
Well, I'm saying the CDC is starting to worry me in the way in which they're messaging. Yeah. Uh, I, I think they're messaging you. a little too much. Like today, it's don't wear a mask. Tomorrow, it's uh, you wear a mask. Uh, yeah. Don't do this. Do that. No, tomorrow, no, do this. Don't do that. Well, and, they have the and, same and, problem. Yeah. The, the, they're, they're messaging us under Trump. They're, no, but their messaging make up their minds. Their messaging is terrible because <clears throat> they should really go with something and stick with it for a while. Yep. You know. I agree. But I mean, I like, I'm finding best. out. Okay, I'm I'm vaccinated, but hey, I could spread it. What? Yeah. I could spread it. I thought you told me if I got the shot, I'd be you know, hey, it's home free. It's everybody. It's uh, Adult Swim. Go have fun. <laughs> you know. Uh uh-uh. uh, no. All of a sudden, it's uh, it's let's wear our mask back indoors again. Let's do this indoors again. Don't you know? Uh, I cl- let's close the movie theaters again. Oh, I mean, it's just movies. it's getting it's getting not getting good. You know, no, and it's, and, like we and it's not well. it's a conflicting message that they're mm-hmm. putting across that, uh, that is confusing people. It even confuses me a little bit. You know, imagine that. And, but I was saying to Marjorie that how are you going to get a public's confidence to get this vaccine if every five minutes they're getting a different kind of message from the CDC? Anybody disagree with me on that one? No, I'm. I kind of agree because, you know what? They. It's like it's on. We're on a swivel all the time. It's like, what do we do? I got the mask on. I don't get the mask on. I can't go here. After a while, it's like I don't even want to go anywhere anymore. Yeah, but it's I mean, like, it, it, it's a matter of give me some kind of guidance that is conservative that is you know uh, that, that is well consi- but make it consistent don't right. tell me yesterday that i don't have to wear a mask indoors <clears throat> if i've been vaccinated and now you're telling me i have to wear a mask indoors if i was vaccinated don't tell me that if i uh, i get the shot i'm not going to get covid when i can get covid even though i'm not going to get it as bad I can still spread it, they're now telling me, to other people. I yeah, mean, that, that's the bad part. But we, the problem is not the fact that all these things are happening. They all may be true. But the it, CDC has got to be more consistent with their messaging. Otherwise, how are they going to convince people to get the shot? True. Yeah. And you know what I was going to ask you too, Alex? <clears throat> and what also has to happen is when is the FDA going to stamp this approval? And then they can, re- I mean, how many millions of people have to get vaccinated before they say, okay, this is good to go now? I don't know why they're waiting. I mean, That's what I was going to ask you. It's been in three million arms already. You I mean, know. it's out of the country. I mean, what are we waiting for now? Give this thing the stamp already. I mean, how much data what do they What are they going to do? Go, whoops, oh, we're wrong. We're not going to give no. it the stamp of approval? No, they may be, That's they what may, I'm waiting for. They may be waiting for time, <clears throat> not for not for uh, shots, but for time, time wise. Because I know I know for avian flu, when they let us do testing mm-hmm. ahead of time, mm-hmm. we're still not we're still not released for testing either. But they waited six months. Yeah. We started in September 2009, and I think April is when we had to have everything everything done. Right, uh, uh, Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah, I mean, this is the worst thing. They should make the decision that the drug is approved. Yes. Come on. It, 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 well, you know, every other country does it faster than we do. Well, I don't know why we're so reticent. We put it in three million, uh, 30, 300 million arms. If it's bad for you, it's a little too late to tell us. I was just going to say, know? I'm waiting for him to say that to us. I'm going to roll over here to do it. Oh, the vaccine is not good. What? <laughs> yeah, John. What? Yep. What's it matter if they approve it or not? Everybody's getting shots anyway. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It means a lot to those people who are hesitant. Yeah. That yeah. the CDC has yet to approve it. That's I don't. I don't. Huh? No, I don't I, think unvaccinated I, I, people are waiting for FDA to approve it. And then they said, they're, I've never heard anybody say, I'm waiting for the FDA to approve it. L- listen, I, you know, I. I I am of the feeling like they had they had this with AIDS, okay, where they had to go the the FDA and convince them to release it. And they said, well, we don't want to release these drugs until we're sure that they're not dangerous. And they said, we're dying. Yeah, they were dying. Okay, we'll take the chance. We're dying. We're going to be dead before you approve this thing. 
I mean, yes, how many million people? Yes, Jeff. Thousands Alex, yeah. you and I took the shots before anybody else. Yeah. Here right. Because of our age. Oh, I got it before you, I think. No. Yes, you did. Oh, you yeah. did. Remember because of my mom. No, Alex, no, 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 you didn't get it before me. You got the did second one. You got the second one before me. <laughs> Uh, did I? I think. Oh, so. yeah, maybe you did. I'm trying to forget. I forgot when. Yeah. It was close. Yeah. Remember you were because my mom, because I, I was a home aide, and they let me. I'm still employed by them. Yeah. yeah. Alex, are, yeah. are we still passing the test? I think so. Oh, well, I mean, I, I don't know. We're now, okay. now we're being told that we have to have a booster, maybe. That's oh, you a do it? Oh, You know, and and I've got. I, I sure I understand boosters. I used to get booster shots all the time when you go get. Uh, what's the one for uh, shingles? You go, oh, you, you get that? it, and then My you get a booster got... shot, and that's it, right? But no, this seems to be like six months shot. later we need a booster shot. Okay. I'll take one. Huh? I'll take one. Yeah, but I mean, but still, it's six months later, and I waited long enough for those two first shots, you yeah, know? Months, so yeah. I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I give up. But I renewed my, uh, my passport. Not my, uh, I'm, I'm talking about my, my flu passport. Oh. Uh, yeah, it was going to expire. When was it going to expire? It was going to expire. Uh, it was going to expire 8-26-21, so that's a month from now. So I just renewed it for the hell of it. Now it goes till February. So, so I've got this other one here. <clears throat> See how I got two of them now? I can get rid of one of them, but I'm not going to. So. Why? Why do they make them expire? I, I that I don't know, you know. But uh, she, I went over to Shecky's and he said, "Well, I just redid mine." So he said, uh, "You should. You can redo yours. All you got to do is, uh, is, is, uh, you know, just you go hit the plus sign on there, and then you expand it, and it extends uh, uh, up until February now." So. Mm -hmm. What the hell? You know, that's fine with me. Uh, well, somebody's got somebody's got their hand up. What is this? Now, well, I raised my hand like this. Oh, I see. And you put the and hand. And you bypassed thing me there. and talked to Jeff, so I thought I'd try the other. Oh, thing. I forgot you were there. Try the other hand. I I forgot, that's okay. I, it's I, forgot, easy to forget. I forgot. So you on there. the on the FDA approving, um, you know, versus emergency use, the U.S. military has the option, the people in it, and I don't understand this, but anyhow, to not get the vaccine because it's not been approved. It's only emergency use only. But when it is approved, they can force anybody in the military, all government employees, to get the shot. So take it with whatever you want. I don't I don't understand the difference really. I mean obviously, you know, the stuff works. Well, you know what I don't like? The city of New York, oh, the mayor did a wonderful thing today. He said anybody that works for the city has to go out and get the uh, the uh, uh, vaccine, has to go out and get a vaccine. Good. Uh, and if they don't, if they don't, what's the penalty? Well, he didn't say we're going to fire them. No. He just simply said you have to be tested every week. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I got news for you about testing somebody every week. Make it every day. I was going to say, I mean, because they could, they could, yeah, I mean, what's the difference? They just stick it up your I nose. I mean, okay, like, so you test me for, for, for COVID. Right, good. No. Tomorrow I get it. Then you're about five days until they test you again. Yes, John. Well, I, didn't they, the, in the NFL, they made a rule that says if you don't get vaccinated, you got to get tested. And if you, you're tested positive, your team forfeits the next game. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty harsh. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's pretty harsh. Yeah. You know. No, well, if I, you know, if mm -hmm. I'm a professional football player and I'm getting paid, a, you know, a couple ten million bucks a game, and uh, they say you don't got to play because somebody on the other team's, you know, positive, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so they so they say so on CNN things they say. On July 16th, the FDA accepted Pfizer's application under priority review. They said it's going to take about two months after that point. Jeez. And so they said they, when was this? From July 16th, two months from there. 
But they haven't fully accepted Moderna's yet. Do you trust Pfizer when they say, well, we think we really should get a booster out there? Or do you think Pfizer just wants to make more money? The science isn't there yet, but they're probably right. Hey, listen, I wish I could go down tonight, tomorrow, and get another booster of it. You, I mean, I'm going to get double vaccinated. I'm getting another one. Why can't you? Huh? What? Why can't you get another booster? I don't know why I can't go down and say I never got the shot before. Yeah, uh, I don't they may have you on record name. with the uh, Social Security. I wouldn't do that, though. What? I wouldn't do that. Why? I wouldn't either. You don't know. You don't know what could happen, you know? I mean. That's right. There's know. there's some talk that if the, you get a third booster of Moderna, not Pfizer, but Moderna, that it invalidates the first two. How can that be? How can it not be? It's science. Who I mean, the hell how, knows? how does that make know. sense? Does that make sense? Brian? Good Brian, show. Brian, does that make sense to I'm you? I'm not a doctor. I don't know. No, but it does it make uh, sense to you? No, I don't think he could do anything. Yeah, you get you, 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 you that was a beam. It doesn't matter to me. I don't have Moderna, fortunately. Think, what, what did you say, Kevin? I said that was probably a meme. Yeah, yeah. I've probably failed typing that in. Yes, John. <laughs> if, if, if you have, you know, if Pfizer and Moderna come out with a booster, it's mm -hmm. not going to be the same one as you had before. It's going to be a tweaked one that will work for the uh, the variants. No, but I think it's just more of the same. I don't think so. What I've been led to believe. I, I don't think so. I think it's tweaked to work for the new variant. Well, Moderna has said that they're going to tweak it. Pfizer said they're not. So. We'll see which one gets the approval. Yeah, we tweet, we tweet our test, our plus. Meanwhile, what's uh, happening with all the people that got Johnson and Johnson? They, they seem to have gotten a really lousy. That's what I want to know because my wife got J and J. Yeah. There, there's a lot of talk about that. They're talking about having the people that got J and J go get one shot of Moderna or Pfizer. Really? Really? You know, see, I mean, there's so much, but healthy. here's this is what I'm talking about is we are in this this vacuum yeah. of not knowing what to do and mm -hmm. the people who are worse at not knowing what to do is the cdc and yeah, they I mean, they seem to pass their own inabilities onto the public in general causing a hesitancy you know and i you know i every day i wake up to a different piece of well the cdc said this today oh yeah well yesterday they said something else they told me six months ago or five months ago that if I went out and got a shot, that it was going to protect me for, oh, maybe up to a year. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'd be good for next year. You know, so I was in line. I waited two hours in line. Yeah. You got to remember, this is the first time we're going through this, so we got to remember that they're figuring it out, too. So we just got to go with the flow and, and, and yeah. let them figure it out. And, and that's, there's that's going to be yeses and noes. That's, and that's all well and good, but then how do you prevent people from having hesitancy at getting the shot when they're seeing all this conflicting information? Just I understand that, but the, you know, you're know always going to have people that are going to... Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I I just think if we want to prevent hesitancy, we come out with some definite stuff. I mean, the only thing is that we are, uh, the amount of people getting the vaccine has increased in the last week, and it's increased because the amount of deaths happening have increased, and people are being told now that if they aren't, uh, if they don't have a shot for it, um they're going to you know they may get the delta variant which well they're is saying that, that the the people that are vaccinated can carry it and give it to the people that are unvaccinated yeah, i'm okay with that they had their chance. that's right give it i'll, I'll start shooting it around that's yeah, right. going, the only people pew, that pew, I want pew. to stay away from is the kids. I'm willing to go around tongue. Yeah, kiss. well, that's the problem. I'm willing to go around tongue kissing some uh, Republicans. Yeah, yeah, you know, Trump would be first in line for you, right? No. Did you see, uh, did you see that um, press hmm. press conference that uh, uh, the the Margie Margie the QAnon lady and uh, what's the yeah. other guy's name? Yeah. The guy from Matt Getz. 
Matt Gates. Yeah, yeah. Gates. Yeah. <laughs> they got shouted down so fast. They got chased off out of the area. Yeah. <laughs> the they, going, Are you a pedophile? Are that? you a pedophile? Yeah, that, that, that right there. Whoops, over here. There's, yeah. there's, there's, the, Trump, there's a Trump balloon mm -hmm. and there's a big sign right there. And there's Marjorie right there. She's speaking. And the Trumps, and the says, it says, uh, pedophiles for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then people were going behind them with signs and then by that time security couldn't keep them and everybody started going around them and they, they ran off they actually yeah, they ran scattered off, off. How, so how, how were they happened? before they oh, ran guess. off how were they reacting to it well, they didn't even get a word in as soon as they started talking everybody was shouting all the down. pedophiles were lining up where did this happen at brian it's in washington so he froze oh. up so like a great rally yeah, really. Somewhere hmm. in Washington. Yeah. It wasn't a rally. Think, it was supposed to be a press conference. I think Jeff was trying to raise his hand a second ago. Jeff. Yeah, I was I was uh, wondering, Alex, if if you're going to set it up that you have to be on GabNet if you've been injected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you probably should. We're kind of close together here. That's right. Yeah, yeah. No social distancing on Zoom. At least I'm on top of Al, and I can kind of. Well, I'm I'm proposing that in order to be uh, uh, nominated for the Hall of Radio oh. Hall of Fame, you have to be vaccinated, and that would eliminate Larry Elder right there. Yeah, there and you go. Uh, who knows who I else? I don't think he's any competition <laughs> for you, at least. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I doubt it. I doubt I'm going to win it. I voted for you. I don't know if I if I made the right. Well, I vote. got I got like <laughs> seven or eight votes, maybe nine or ten votes for you. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I got about ten emails. Yeah, I'll link to your email so you can vote. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. Well, I mean, you got about ten emails. I don't get it. You got ten emails from whom? I got no. I have ten different emails. Oh, emails you do it. Oh, different ten different email addresses. Yeah, uh, I, I, as yeah, I got ten they different. They ask emails. you for your address, and then they let you vote. Uh, yeah. So I've got a bunch of junk emails and and emails that you know that I don't use and things like that. So. Yeah, I'm gonna use them all. So if you win, we know that Kevin was the one. I'll tell you a story. I, I, I guess I can tell it this late in the game, but back many, many years ago when I was at Live 105 in San Francisco, every year Billboard magazine used to have a, 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 a vote by people who bought Billboard magazine, uh, a big vote uh, for uh, best radio station, best radio personality, you know, best this, best that. And so this one particular year, I, w I was talking about it on the air or something, and I said everybody should go out and you know, buy a copy of Billboard and put in Live 105. I said, I don't much care if you put me in or not, but Live 105, right? So uh, yeah. I, we're about two weeks into this, and I get a call from somebody. says, I'm not going to tell you who I am, but I live up here in Petaluma, and I work at the post office. And the post office here just got 20,000 billboard <laughs> ballots to be distributed to the various copies of the magazine in the Bay Area. So I took them all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm filling them out massively, having a bunch of people help me and we're voting for you and the radio station. <laughs> and you won. A couple a couple of a couple of months later the results come out and Live 105 is station of the year. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and I lost. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, the guy lied to you then. Oh wow. No, he he did he, but he uh, but they were all they were saying, "Oh, we won, we won." I went, "Yeah, yeah, I know. I know." And I never really told anybody that story, but the fix was in. All the handwriting, they had a handwriting analysis. Uh, no, and it was a matter, of, a matter of just checking, you know, I guess somebody had writer's cramp after this was over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I, the only reason I don't think I'm gonna win is I, the ultimate vote is not the audience, believe it or not. It's the, uh, it's the uh, nominating committee. Uh, and while they know who I am, because they obviously nominated me, 
um, they are, um, uh, you know, they're going to look at it and say, what's going to get us the most publicity for, yeah. for mm -hmm. and I think Sally, Jesse, Raphael probably would get them the most oh, publicity. Yeah. People would go, oh, look, Sally finally made it into the Hall of Fame, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. so She's think, older than you, isn't she? Oh, yeah, by, by, by five years, something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know something? If she won, if she won, I mean, I, I want to, I'd like to win. You know, it'd be nice. But if I don't win, by the way, everybody's watching this, just go to uh, www.radiovote.com. It's www.radiovote.com or go to gabnet.net. I have it up there. And, and uh, if you get a chance, vote for me. It'd be much appreciated. But if I don't win and, and Sally wins, I, I won't feel bad because I like Sally and I think she she certainly deserves it, you know. Did she do a lot of, I mean. She did a lot I of radio before. I know it from, from TV only. Before so radio, before television, she did a lot of radio. Yeah, she was one of the few women working this business. Uh, doing issue I don't remember her on radio. I remember her on yeah. television. Uh, well, most people don't remember her from radio. They do remember her from television because she was on the NBC radio network is where she was doing radio. But, you know, I'm, uh, listen, I might still win because they, the judges might say the same thing. Hey, she was primarily known for TV. She wasn't known for radio. But a few years ago, Wendy Williams won. But then again, she was big in radio before she ever oh, had the TV show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, I if, if she wins, uh, I won't feel bad because I I, I think uh, uh, I would be happy for her. On the other hand, if any of those other two people win, I wouldn't feel good. Especially, <laughs> and we'll be talking about it on the show for a week. Nah, nah. I don't know who those two guys are. Mm. I've never heard of them in my <laughs> life. And also, I don't know if you read my little biography that they have. Yes. Well, the one I sent them was a little longer than that and a little more inclusive. It included that I invented the podcast, for instance, you know. Yeah. And a couple of other things. And they, they edited it down to, you know. So I know what to do if I'm ever nominated again, what to send them. Me, Alex Bennett, me famous. I don't know, yeah. you know, something like that. Very short. Used to be a big shot. Huh? Used to be a big shot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they, have they had people repeat the nominations year after year? Yeah, well, they, you're allowed to be nominated up to five times. Oh, okay. Before and they this won't is your first you. time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, you know, maybe next year. You know, I don't know. You know, we'll see. It uh, could well be. Um, I don't know how many of these people haven't been nominated before. You know, uh, because I didn't pay attention to it before. I was always, I always used to feel bad about the fact that I never got nominated for it. I, I felt that I, I felt I deserved it. It wasn't an egotistical thing. It's just I felt I deserved it. You know. I've never seen you on TV. What? <laughs> I said I've never seen you on TV. Yeah. So you, I know it's radio. I mean, I remember you from San Francisco. So you've never seen me on TV. This isn't for TV. Well, this is closer to TV than radio. Well, no, 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 no. At least you can say this. You're on before Howard, so screw him. What do you mean I'm on before Howard? He was not. He wasn't nominated, right? He hasn't been nominated. No, he, I think he won a few years ago. Yeah. Oh, has he? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, fuck him. Yeah. No, screw him. Fuck you. Yeah. Howard Stern. We, have a, we didn't have a fuck you this week, remember? Every week we asked somebody yeah. to say, you, there's so, one. You, Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> he copied you anyway. Shit. He copied you anyway. Yeah, yes, he did. I know. Yes, he did. But, you know, listen, nobody, nobody's going to believe that, just like nobody believes I invented podcasting. You know? Yep, uh, because, well. and I, my advice to the rest of the world is, don't ever be the first to do something. They only remember the second person who did something. Yeah. The really, I'm serious. One. I'm serious. There's, uh, no, nobody's done this one. either, though, right? I mean, nobody's done this. We're strangers talking to each other for... Well, you know, now for, they're doing it because of Zoom. But right. I was doing it prior to Zoom. I was doing it way back, you know, how many years ago? Eight years ago? On Skype. 
on Skype, using Skype. Yeah, when I saw that Skype could do more than one person at a time, I said, oh, well, this, you know, this will be fun. I actually yeah, did this on radio, Skype's believe aging. it or not, I did this on radio uh, in, where did I do it first? I think I did it in, God, I'm trying to think, did I do it in, in, in Chicago? No, did I, I think I did it in New York first. What I did is we found that if you remember those old push button telephones where you had several lines, like four lines, and you would push each line to oh, talk yeah. to the person, Business phones. you know, so and so's on line two and you go to line two. Well, uh, somebody uh, uh, discovered uh, uh, and had never done anything with it, but discovered that if you went into those phones, they had like kind of a metal bracket that if you remove the metal bracket, you know what I'm talking about, uh, Kevin? Yeah. You could push down more than one button at a time. In fact, you could push four buttons down at a time and talk to all four people at the same time. And so what I did with my shows is I had four people at a time talking on the shows. Now, it didn't get a lot. Every time you put somebody else on, the audio got a little lower and you had to boost it up. But we, I used to do a show where I would talk to groups of people just like I'm doing with you guys. And this was back in the 70s, you know. Um, so uh, I was doing this before I even did it on, uh, on, on GabNet. But what I discovered is that we had Skype and you could put on more than one person at a time. But I was, first of all, I was looking for a way to not have to deal with the phone company because they used to charge hellacious amounts of money to install phone lines in for broadcasts. Mm -hmm. And then I heard about this thing called Skype and I said, well, if I use that, it'll be free, right? And I won't, I can put on a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And then I found, uh, you know, I could bring people on one at a time. Then I noticed I could bring on five people at a time, six people at a time. And so the idea of the citizen panel was born and we were the first to do that. But nobody will ever give me credit for that, you know. Just like, like I, there's this thing called Podcast Journal uh, that's online, and they are they're like a business for po a business journal for podcasts. And one time I complained and I said, you know, I invented the podcast, and I explained the whole thing. I even have the program here that we use. If they want to see it. Oh no, you didn't. So and so did. And I looked up so and so, and they did it five years after I did it. You know, so don't ever be the first person to do something, because you won't get credit for it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jack. Hey, when you said, oh, oh, wait a minute, let me turn that down. Oh. Wow. wow. So like God is being the echo. Uh, hey, oh, no, no, not no, at all. Not. That's okay, Elvis. Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, if you want to, if you want to go that way, I mean, you know, you can do it. But uh, let me see here. I can, I can do the same thing, you know, if you really want to do it. Jesus, God has spoken. Yes. Anyway, let me turn that off. Are you, are you, uh, Jack? Have you got it figured out now? <clears throat> or are we gonna have to hear your show tonight all in echo? Yeah. I'm ask my mother, is she this very colored? I'm what? joking. <laughs> do you have do you have an FX button? Just turn it off. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm checking, checking the FX. Oh, there it is, right there. There yeah. you go. Here, there, there. there. What, what kind of board do you have? Uh I've got a little Mackie and it's oh, a yeah, new this one. is a Mackie too, so no wonder I wasn't I, I was able to fix it for you. Yeah. Uh put this in over the weekend mm -hmm. but you're absolutely right you know uh believe it or not but you won't believe it mm -hmm. uh before tom donahue got credit for doing aor we were already doing it at kmpx mm -hmm. and um, he walked into the station one day after hearing what we were doing and uh the guy that was the sales manager uh, asked me who is that and i said that's the guy it's going to get the credit for what we're doing because he was the big name in top 40 radio in san francisco at that time and had retired and he heard what we were doing and liked it and 
wanted to be a part of it. Yeah, when they always made a big uh, a big deal out of uh, out of Tom Donahue in San Francisco, I went. These guys were doing this over at uh, where was it? What was KMPX. This? KMPX for a long time. Well, about a year. Yeah, almost a year. Yeah, in fact, you, you have who was the guy? Who was the guy who actually started it? Who actually got screwed? Screwed by uh, by everybody. He was the guy who first overnight played progressive music. A uh, guy named, well, he didn't get screwed. He gets some of the credit for it. But uh, the guy that came up with the idea and talked the station in, into letting him do it, moi. No, it wasn't you. Yes, it was. No, there was somebody before you. You're Sorry. thinking of Larry Miller. I'm thinking of Larry Miller, yeah. Now, Larry, I was already at the radio station the guy that was doing the overnights mm -hmm. was a guy named Dave Merritt. Mm -hmm. And Merritt was doing sort of a combination blues and jazz show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, was getting no response. And, you know, I was still in college at the time. And uh, I said, why don't you start playing some of this and some of this? And I actually gave him my, all of my uh, Stones and my Dylans and uh, the few Beatle albums I had. And yeah, but the Beatles were popular at the time. Well, yeah, but the thing is, though, this was right around the time the Rubber Soul album came out, which was kind of a departure from what But everybody made. was playing it. Yeah, but nobody was playing it on FM. Yeah, well, what, what, where, where was KMPX? Where was that out of? It San Francisco. Berkeley, San Francisco. Was it Berkeley? I thought it was Berkeley. 50 no. Green Street in San Francisco. Ah, uh, that's right, yeah. I don't remember that station. So, so you're on, saying Larry uh, Miller, Casey then where did Larry Miller too? come into the story? Uh, Larry Miller had moved to San Francisco. He'd been doing a folk music show in Detroit. He had the idea of doing something in San Francisco, and he wanted to play folk music, and and some jazz and some blues and some you know some some rock stuff in other words what we call free form yeah basically but uh uh they fought us the management and ownership fought us tooth and nail wasn't that lee crosby lee crosby known in some circles as country lee because well, when i worked with him at ktim in san rafael he was country <laughs> lee crosby yeah. and when he would walk in the door every morning we'd say hi cunt <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was trying not to go that way. Was he was he the one that converted K San to country? No. 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 Okay. No, he was he bought he well he bought KMPX, right? Yes. Paid a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Can you imagine buying a guy? radio station for a hundred and twenty thousand? Well, Jeez. stick around, you may be able to soon. So okay. anyway, yes. <laughs> uh uh but I had heard that Larry Miller had actually first, po at least popularized free form. Larry popularized it, but we had, we were already perhaps um, three months into doing it when Larry got there yeah. uh, in late. Because the thing that everybody got pissed 66. about was is that he didn't really get credit because who got credit was Tom Donahue who yeah. went over to KSAN yeah, and 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 started playing that music, and because he was a famous disc jockey and was going to FM, my God, what's he doing to his career? And then he does this format. Everybody was paying attention, and it was like he invented the whole thing when these guys over at KMPX had already been doing it for a year. Yeah, yeah I was over there because I got fired at KSOL AM, mm -hmm. and I knew. Uh, Bob well, Poston, you weren't. You weren't black enough is the reason why that was right <laughs> no sometime i'll tell you what i got fired for it it wasn't that yeah and his son sean donahue ended up over at ksan too well and, no this is ksan so did, was, so, so did his, 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 his right right his wife rachel donahue no rachel ran up uh, uh wound up at kmpx uh being times board up and originally and yeah. then going to um K S A N F M. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, we don't want to hear the whole history of 
but yeah. but anyway, you know, yeah. w- w- once again, all this you know, happened over fifty years ago, so it doesn't really yes. matter. It was like just yesterday, Timmy, Sonny. <laughs> A- anybody remember K Fat? Yep, it's yep. still here. Is it? Yeah. Oh. oh no, I'm sorry, K Pig. Yeah, it became K Pig. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a good station. And KOMB when it was the cum spot on your dial? Oh, uh, that, yeah. yeah with 105 right Oink 4. 105 <laughs> Oink 4. Hey, I got a call letter that I'll bring up. KSJO. Does anybody yeah. remember yeah, sure. that? Yeah, sure. Of course. San Jose, right San Jose. next to KOME. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I will remind you of one that you don't remember. KTIM. Yep. But you, so remember, remember, you remember, I remember it as that a, you, you, you remember it as a progressive radio <clears throat> station though, don't you? You don't remember it as a station I worked for where we played nothing but Perry Como twenty four seven. Yep. <laughs> you could barely get it down in San Francisco. Probably. Well, it was well, a, it was what we area. called a day timer and it had very, it had only a thousand watts of radio. Yeah, you could barely power. get it across the bridge. I couldn't I couldn't get it on my filling sitting in the transmitter. That's how weak right? it was. Yeah. Yeah. You had to be in San Rafael to hear it. Yeah, yeah. But that's where well, I started. That's... That was my first radio station. Well, hey. well, as a kid, you know, I was not quite 14. I took the bus from San Francisco over to KTIM, and that's where you and I first met. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You were just coming off the air, and I, and you were kind enough to say to him, the, the youngster, why don't you get a real job? Be a piano player at a whorehouse. I didn't say that. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> no. I listened to, I used to listen to KFRC with uh, Dr. Don Rose. Ah, uh, me too. Yep. Oh, I he came, that. he came much later. Bawana Johnny. KLIV. Nobody heard that one. Bawana Johnny, huh? Nobody oh, yeah, KLIV. Yeah, that was a pretty good station down the peninsula, yeah. See, now everybody listening to us doesn't know what the fuck we're talking yeah, about. Tony, Tony's like, you've heard of all these radio <laughs> well, stations I wanted to ask Jeff a real quick question we'll go back to the, the waiting room what do they use to uh, do a heart biopsy do you know biopsy yeah to take four pieces of heart well they, 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 first, mom uh, well, they, they give you a wife is what happens <laughs> yeah that's true they did it to my mom today and I thought this was going to be a big biopsy? process yeah, they ran it through the carotid artery. Yes, they do things, yeah. Like and they went down and took four pieces of her heart. I had to have her in the city at six o'clock this morning, and they had her out by ten. No anesthesia. Oh. What? Yeah, but what? Is, they didn't replace her valves. No, they just took biopsy. <laughs> it just took a, a test. That's all. They used an angioplasty, right? They took pieces of her heart for samples, right. and they're going to run it for tests. How can they snap without anesthesia? No anesthesia. How can they do that? Ninety years old. It probably isn't an it probably Mm -hmm. isn't a terribly invasive procedure. You know, through the carotid artery. All she had was a band aid Mm -hmm. when I left. I went, Jesus! I I wanted to keep her in overnight. Yeah. We ended up going over to the park and driving around San Francisco and going down in the coast having lunch. And then she had her heart attack. (laughs) <laughs> no, she's still kicking. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure. A tough I, mom. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's what I said. Hey, look who's there. There's Adrian. You know something? Hi, Adrian. She's no, been, I was just wondering she's what they been used. growing up before our it very eyes. Amazing. Oh, she gets to look a little older every day. I'm, that's Pretty what kids soon, do. she's going to be a real old lady. Younger. Huh? And I get younger. And eh? you get younger. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Say hi. This is one of the hey, good Adrian, good to see yeah, you. Remember him? That's Kevin. Remember Kevin? Uh, thank you, Alan. Appreciate the, uh, the, uh, the joining our little party. Um, um, uh, 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 Brian, and, and uh, it's a little uh, doll you have there, isn't it, that you wind up? And uh, shoot? I'm going with Alan and Phil gun shooting very soon. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, of course, Jeff, always great to have you here. Tony, great to have you here. Uh, um Mr. Larkin, as always, a pleasure. And of course, Kevin, my old pal. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Why doesn't everybody give a big wave goodbye? And I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you and say goodnight. Okay, there they go. Oops, that's not what I want. I want this. Okay, there we go. Uh, 
<laughs> I almost played the opening. And knowing me, I'd just be so out of it, I'd start doing the whole show over again. Anyway, good night to our people here uh, for having joined us tonight. Uh, that's it. Um, uh, you know, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He comes next right after we are through here. You saw him for a few minutes there. I thank him for calling too. Uh, 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 he, has, uh, he takes his calls on Skype at GabNet Live. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I'll be back again tomorrow night. We'll have the sports show on at 8.30 with the franchise MC. I'm back again at 10.30. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody.